So imagine that you're working for a consulting company that is growing. That is awesome. That is amazing. But the question is, how would you handle the growth in projects? Would you hire more resources? Would you develop better processes? Would you put together a governance framework in order to support the growth in projects. Some of these questions today we're going to tackle because what I understand and what I've learned over my years of doing this thing that I love that I hope you fall in love with called project management is sometimes when organizations grow, uh, they have growth, they forget about the main thing and keeping it simple. So today I'm going to show you how we're going to keep it simple, but yet and still these practices, these items, these tips are going to work wonders for your organization. If you're new to the channel or new to this episode, I should say, I go by the name of ED. For all you smart and intelligent folks out there, that just simply means Ed. I have an eight point framework and these eight points, my goal, my job, my mission today is to unpack the title, which is entitled Role of Project Management in a Growing Company. You mind if I share a story with you, family? You know, um, I remember when I first got into project management and uh, this was whew, 15, 60 years ago. And I'm, I'm super excited because I had my first project and I go to uh, the, my manager at that time and I said, hey, um, is there any training that you guys, additional training that you guys offer because I wanna grow as a project manager, I wanna develop. And they were like, no, we, we don't offer any training. We don't offer any development. I said, what about mentorship? Is there any mentors that I could work with to help me you know, grow? Is there any project managers that you see in the organization that maybe I could partner up with so I could learn from, so I can actually learn from the mistakes that they have made so I can, again, grow, but yet and still, it was still like, no, because you probably won't have the time because of the priority. And I became very... Um, frustrated. I'm using clean language here. I was very frustrated, but that's not really what I was, but you know what I mean. But I digress. The point I'm trying to make, family, is, is that I had to take it upon myself to invest in myself. I had to take it upon myself to know the power of continuing to capture knowledge, but watch this, applying the knowledge that I learned. Because we always, uh, I learned this from Stephen Larson, the ability that we sometimes fall into a trap is, is these learning loops. And then that's why organizations get nervous about investing in us because of two reasons. First reason is because of the learning loop. When they send you to a seminar or send you to training, how is that going to benefit the organization and how they're going to grow? And then the next thing that I was seeing, there was more of an epidemic within the uh, project management realm where people were getting their uh, organizations were sending their, t uh, their, their resources to PMP or CAPM training. And then once that resource got their PMP or CAPM, they would leave the organization. So the organization was like, no, nah, we're not making that investment no more because of the fact that we wanted to retain that particular resource. So today, let's get into these eight points and see how if an organization is growing, how could a project manager or how can I should really say improve the project management of, of the actual organization? Point number one, hire a project management consultant. Listen, family, uh, if you are unwilling to invest in a consultant to come in, and I'm not talking about that typical consultant that'll come in and charge you high billable hours and you get no value from it. My approach as, as, a, uh, as a consultant would be, if an organization was growing, this would be my approach. I would sit down with executive first. Why do you want to sit in with executive? I'm going to unpack that later. You're going to have to sit uh, stay tuned to the near end to understand what why I would uh, say that. Number two, I would follow people. I would follow all of the project managers. So if they have ten, five, it doesn't matter how many project managers there. Are, I would basically be like sort of like a ride along. A ride along is basically, I'm not saying anything. Don't ask me anything. I'm taking notes. I'm recording the meeting so I can go back and listen to it again to see how they're uh, you know, leading their, their stakeholders. Also, I'm watching a couple key things. How engaged is the project manager? How are they reporting on where they truly are? versus what they are telling uh, leadership. I'm also watching to see um, 
do they have the ability to communicate effectively? If they don't have that ability to communicate effectively, why not? What is going on? So there's so many disconnects. Uh, I'm looking for the disconnects because normally when a organization is growing, sometimes they forget to bring the project managers with them. Mm, I think I just said something. What do you mean by that, ED? Well, what I'm saying is, is that they start taking on projects that they haven't developed their team to be able to handle. Even because again, we know the definition, we'll, we'll unpack it at a very high level, is a temporary endeavor. So if you're taking on application projects and you haven't developed your team as meaning having the uh, a, a real cohesive team around the project manager and you're expecting the project manager to be the project coordinator, to be the technical SME, to be the uh, person that's going up to executive, you have all of these roles because that's what you believe a project manager does and not understanding, no, a project manager skill set, yes, they have the ability to do all those things I mentioned, but their key role is the ability to facilitate, the ability to engage stakeholders, the ability to encourage, or most of all, my favorite, and I always go back to this John Maxwell uh, piece about leadership, is to influence. And then I'll add is to impact. When you influence and impact, now you have an opportunity to bring people along with you that may have been uh, not wanting to take a, a ride with you on the journey. Okay, I, I'm saying too much about this one. Let's move on. On to point number two. Point number two is drive project governance and decision making. I always see that, you know, the first thing people would do, and I'm, I'm probably may getting ahead of myself, but I'm too excited about this. This is what I does, family. One of the things that I always see happens about um, project governance and decision making, especially when organizations grow, first thing they throw out is, well, we'll just be agile. And I'm like, okay, what, is, what does that mean? You're going to be agile. Because agile is a mindset. Agile is a tool. So are you going to use Kanban? Uh, Kanban? Are you going to use Scrum? And why are you using this? Does it make sense for what this project is? Because there's a difference between being predictive and, uh, and adaptive. Predictive is more of your waterfall approach. Adaptive is where, hey, I don't have all the requirements. I don't know what I'm doing here. And I'm, we might have to figure this out along the way. So we have to be able to, as as the organization grow, we need to define roles. We need to identify responsibilities. And that's another key thing because you, you'll find somebody that's wearing three or four different hats, but your organization is growing. Hire more people to support them so they can focus on the main thing. And most of all, this is a lot of times what is forgotten, <laughs> establishing a project steering committee. What this does is when you have a project steering committee, you're also putting in place of being able to create escalation paths and, and also critical uh, decisions. So you're not just waiting on one person to make a critical decision. You have a group of people that come together when there are critical uh, decisions in, in place. Also, you have to be uh, cognizant of, of providing or putting in place proper documentation when decisions are made. This is including the governance of meetings. This is including making decision logs. As you know, I talk about my RAID Q log where I said, if you want to know more about that, I'll do another deep dive into that because this creates transparency as well as accountability. Let's move on to point number three. This is what I talked about. I shared with you at the beginning of this uh, episode is it's so important that you have mentorship within the organization. If you do not have mentorship in the organization, how are you expected the project managers to grow unless they go and go get someone like a Phil or go get someone, you know, that is in this realm of project management leadership and and all these things, if they go inside their own pocket and do it, because if they don't, if they're like, hey, I'm just, just there for a paycheck, first of all, I don't want to work with you because if you're here for just a paycheck and not here for a career, then I, this organization may not be a good fit for you. But if you're here for a career, 
we you have to let go if, if this person leaves and goes to another organization. But let me ask you a question. If you made an investment for five thousand dollars for someone to get their certification like their PMP, their cap M, and they gave that back to you tenfold, meaning that you got fifty thousand uh, dollars worth of uh, value out of them. Don't you think that was a fair investment? Sometimes I believe, and uh, as I stated earlier, that you organizations get, get so caught up in people leaving and forget about what they've done. Imagine if organizations made the investment in people, then if they do leave and, and, and they go to another organization and they're not offering that, they're not providing that, they may say, hey, you know, I may have made a bad decision here. Let me call back John and see if I can get my old uh, job back and, and really make this thing work. So again, finding mentorship and this allows for the mentor to be able to identify skill gaps because project managers, just like anyone else, have skill gaps. And so by finding the skill gaps, now you can train up and now you can coach up. Don't go and get just the same um, in the box training for all of the project managers because all of the project managers are, are at different levels. Some project managers do not engage with the stakeholders. So maybe you need to get coaching with them on persuasion, on sales of people. I'm not talking about monetary sales. I'm talking about sales of people, understanding people. Maybe there's people, project managers that can't deal with conflict. These are key attributes. If you can't deal with conflict, which is constantly on project, if you can't deal with people, this is what a role of a project manager entails. So finding these things really, really assist a project manager. And at, at the end of the day, you want to do performance appraisals or performance reviews. And again, don't wait to the to the end of the year or the six month mark. Hey, let's see if we can do this every 30 days or every two weeks. And it's not about again, it's not about the individual. It's about the work because you'll find out there may be some skill gaps that we can address. Let's move on to point number four. Like I told you earlier, you have to get executive buy in aligning the project with the company strategies. A lot of times what will happen is, is that uh, organizations or growing organizations will build these PMOs or bring in these project managers and the, the leader over all of these do not connect with uh, executives and get the buy-in. What is the buy-in? The buy-in is saying, hey, we need these pro we need project managers and project coordinators here to help move along and hold people accountable for the thing they said that they were going to uh, do the commitment that they're made because when we don't do that this is when our projects feel uh, fail short this is when they don't meet the triple constraints meaning scope cost time and quality so if that's the case why wouldn't we want to go and get buy-in before we do anything a plan should be put in place and take taken to executives and say this is the vision that i see for bringing in or uh for upgrading our project managers and let me explain and walk through at a high level of why you should be uh, making this investment in project manager are you tired of spit over uh overspending on on projects hey we need to bring in a project manager are you tired of the customer um, coming in and adding additional scope and not locking the scope and holding the customer accountable and holding the team accountable you probably want to bring in a project manager are you tired of your uh, of you saying they're, they're telling you one date and then it's two weeks or a month later before they ex actually hit the date you probably want to bring in a project manager you get where I'm going family I won't drain that point I'll digress there with the simple point it's important that we align or I should say when that company is is growing now the vision has to change and the vision has to change to align with what the company strategy is and what the what's the strategic listen to this family what the strategic approach is and what the tactical approach is because these are two different things in my opinion the strategic the strategic approach is the vision the tactics is what are we going to do day in and day out what are we going to do over a month of 30 days 60 90 days over a quarter you get where i'm going so the point of it is family we have to ensure that um, we are getting the proper support from executives let's move on to point number five implement a scalable project management process what does that look like as a company grows project managers must develop and implement a scalable process that can accommodate the increasing project complexity and team size there's not a one-size-fit-all 
type of approach. Now, when we establish this, we're going to, we can start off with the standard, which is project initiating, planning, execution, monitor, and closing procedures. However, to support that, we need to be putting in place uh, templates, uh, FAQs, um, lesson learned, uh, so many different artifacts to actually support the project. If we're not doing this and then we're upset why the project is falling off, it starts with you, meaning it starts with the organization if they're growing and, and they don't have the proper resource in there to support the project managers, this is when it goes left. So being able to create this foundation is going to be key. Let's move on to point number six. This is my favorite. Um, Facilitating stakeholder engagement and communication. Listen, effective stakeholder engagement is crucial for any project. You give me any project, if I do not have effective stakeholder engagement, I can already tell you, you know what, listen, uh, I quit. Mm -hmm. I'm not even, this is not even worth their time or my time. You say, man, you know, you quitting already? Yes, I'm quitting. Here's my slip. Uh, let me first, let me find a job and then I'm out because I already know what's about to happen because I've been doing this for so many years. And you know why stakeholders, you know why stakeholders are not engaged is because again, going back to that main point of that executive buy-ins because of exe when ex executives are bought in, oh my, <sighs> Whew. They hold their leaders responsible and accountable, and, and those leaders hold the, the, their direct reports accountable and responsible. And when that happens, you see, yeah, you're going to have some trials and tribulations and projects, but they are committed. They are not interested in being part of that project. What does commitment look like for a stakeholder? Uh, a commitment looks like they're showing up at, at meetings. What does commitment look like? When you send an email or you send a request, they are on top of it. They're making sure that it's a priority. So again, we have to make sure that we have stakeholder engagement. It's going to be super crucial because what can happen is project managers should be identifying these key stakeholders. We know under initiating, one of the two big things there is develop project charter and identify stakeholders. And when we, when we identify stakeholders, we need to set the expectation. We understand that when expectation is not set, when standards are not set, this is when frustration from stakeholders um, happen because they had a certain standard and expectation, but you didn't articulate yourself well enough for them to understand how important it is. Let's move on to point number seven, manage project budget and financials. Listen, I would recommend that when you're leading, when you're, man when you're managing the project budgets, if you do not have any software and you have to rely on Excel documents, you want to make sure that you are tracking expenses. You are ensuring that there's a visibility to the financial. When I did a deep dive on the actual project status report, you seen from a high level what was planned and what was actually spent. Why did I have those two numbers in play is because I want to show what well, we were planning on spending this, but this is what we're actually spending and it's, it's reoccurring. So we, when we're presenting to executives, they're going to ask, well, why are we spending more than we had planned for? Or wow, we're not, we're, we're doing really well with our financials. So it creates a conversation which you want, which you want to be engaged in. So actionable step for this particular one is using some type of financial management software. If it's not in the budget, good old Excel spreadsheet or Google, good old Google Sheets. And one of the biggest things that I always see what happens is project managers, when they first get their project and the financials, they forget to go back and conduct regular budget reviews. We have to conduct regular budget reviews because if we don't know where we're going, any destination will do. That'll catch up with you later. Let's move on to point number eight. Report on performance and, and metrics. Uh, again, family, if we don't have a target that we're shooting at, then uh, using the example I used before, then any target would do. So having the ability for project managers must provide regular updates and project progress, performance, as well as metrics to executives, as well as your stakeholders. Um, I see a lot of times, uh, sometimes project managers get caught up that they want to get to the executive so fast that they forget to work with their stakeholders to let them know where they're at. Because a, one of the stakeholders may get pulled into a meeting with their manager and they may say, hey, where we're at on that particular project you're a part of, 
that stakeholder should be able to go to your SharePoint, your share file, wherever your document repository is and pull it up and say, oh, last time uh, I checked based on this date, this is where we're at. Here's the actual project status report. It's key. It's very important to ha have KPIs, K uh, key performance indicators, um, in, like using a dashboard or some type of visual aid. I like PowerPoints. Um, I've also used Google uh, Slides. Um, using Smartsheets, that's another one of my favorite tools. But all of these tools are really great tools to support, that's the key word, support you on the actual performance because you have to execute as a project manager. All right, I got two bonuses for you. Uh, bonus number one, respect the journey. This is earned, not given. A lot of times as, um, <laughs> you know, as a company grows, uh, sometimes they get so excited because of their growth that they forgot that they didn't have over that they didn't grow overnight. They grew over time, and sometimes they want to grow. They want they want everyone to catch up, and they haven't caught up yet. So it's important that you create a roadmap or a journey for the uh, for everyone. So when when you are growing, everyone can grow. Uh, with you and you can identify what type of methodology what type of framework that you want to lead from a governance standpoint when when pro when you have your project managers leading projects and my final bo uh, my final bonus is if you don't have a PMO office you're not taking this thing called project management serious I'm sorry because what a PMO does I say this is that they separate what I say church and state what does that mean meaning that Project managers have a safe place to go and uh, seek help. I, I call it sort of like um, a, a center where you can go and ask for uh, assistance or ask for, or when you have to go through uh, gating calls, they drive all of that governance piece for you to ensure that that project manager that is leading a project is effective. That project manager that is leading that project is protected because if not, then anything could come their way. And if they can't have someone in the, a strong, a strong voice in the PMO to say, no, that's, he's doing the right thing. She's doing the right thing. We don't do that here. We're not there. We're using this particular software. We're not using these, all these other 13 software. This is how we track projects. If you want your projects tracked here, if you want your projects led like this, this is how we do it. If not, you can do it under your department. So it's important that you have a PMO in place. This is why I'm writing the book about PMO. Uh, I've been saying it was supposed to release, but I keep getting good information. I keep adding it to the book uh, because I really want it to be something that you could pick up and from a mindset piece, understand what, uh, what a PMO is understand why it's important to have executive lead leadership, understanding, identify how you want your project managers to lead particular projects. Also, I'm gonna grab this book here, is the magnetic project uh, project uh, the magnetic project manager this is a great book i would recommend that you pick up as you are as you're growing because this book really helps you identify some key points of the mindset listen here what we talk about is the mindset the tools and techniques they they're always going to be evolving but if you can't get the stakeholders to lock in with their mindset first none of, none of the tools the the money that you're spending on um, software, none of that is even going to matter if they don't understand the why. Here's my three closing remarks, family, and I'm gone. First of all, I would recommend that if you are a growing organization and you do not have the proper support in, in place, you want to hire a project management consultant. Don't hire a project management consultant that is just coming in there. Uh, you want to make sure they're invested and what, and, or as my mentor would say, have some skin in the game. And how they would do that is coming in and really taking the time to follow each of the project managers to really understand uh, their 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 um, strengths and their areas of opportunity. You see, I didn't use weakness. Their areas of opportunity, because then from that point you could put together. Okay, now th this is where I see the skill gaps at. Do you want me to assist on helping them? Uh, really close those skill gaps or do you want to handle it on your own? But being able to write up a report and articulate out what the next steps are if you are leading that particular uh, effort. Point number two, develop and mentor project uh, team members. You should have when a project manager finishes a project, all the project managers should get together and they should be talking about 
hey, uh, my name is Rob. I just finished this project. Let me tell you some of the lessons learned. They should be uh, spreading those lessons learned out to the PMO, the actual project managers that are that's not even part of that project. Why? Because sometimes, some someday, they may work with those stakeholders. So to understand what is actually going on as far as some of the challenges they had and some of the successes that they had will be important for that for that particular upcoming project manager. And the last and final thing, like I said, respect the journey. This is not, this is earned. This is not given. So take the time to understand that you didn't grow overnight. You grew over, t uh, over time. So don't get caught up in the shiny object syndrome thinking you got to go get 13 softwares in order to support a project. I could come in and support your project with a Excel, uh, Excel spreadsheet and a word and a word document, meaning give me a project charter, give me a project. Uh, I'll create a project schedule. I'll can put, uh, I can put in a Excel, uh, workbook, my whole project management plan. So don't overcomplicate it. Yes. These tools are very important. If you have it in your budget, I would definitely recommend it because it takes it away from more of a manual approach and it's easier to hold people accountable with these tools. But if you don't have it and you're unwilling to invest in the training that comes along with it, I wouldn't recommend that you do it. Family, I hope this addresses and answers the questions of when your organization grows, these are some of the things you want to go start talking to your leadership about that, hey, can we start getting prepared for this, for these artifacts, for these things? Watch this episode, listen to this episode multiple times, download this episode. There's so much value here. I hope that it works for you. Let me know in the comments which one of your favorite takeaways that I gave today or one of the points that you were like, man, I really didn't think about that. I would love to hear it. Until next time, this has been your boy ED. You know my slogan. I'm out.